إن الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا My dear brothers and sisters in Islam during the time of the khilafa of Muawiyah رضي الله عنه he wrote a letter to Aisha Umm al-Mu'mineen the mother of the believers رضي الله عنها asking her for advice and he said advise me but don't overburden me meaning give me al-mukhtasar al-mufid give me something simple and to the point something that's going to benefit me so Aisha radiallahu anha wrote in response to him in a letter assalamu alaikum peace be on to you she said, Verily I heard the Prophet وسلم, saying, Man iltamas ridha Allah bi sakhat al nas kafahu Allahu al nas. That whoever seeks Allah's pleasure, even if it displeases the people, that Allah will suffice for him the people. Meaning Allah will make it easy for him in dealing with the people and being accepted by the people and what have you. And then he said, alayhi salatu was salam, wa man iltamasa ridha al-nas bi sakhati Allah wa kalahu Allahu ila al-nas. That whoever seeks the pleasure of the people, even if it's displeasing to Allah, then Allah will leave him to the people. He will go through difficulties and displeasures when it comes to dealing with the people. And she said at the end of the letter, Wassalamu alaikum. A very simple, straight to the point message. And what a great piece of advice. Not just for Muawiyah, radiallahu an, as the Khalifa, as the leader, but this is a message for all of us. For all of us to come and to reflect on. When we look into one of the main reasons. And one of the main obstacles that comes between the Muslims and implementing their deen is that they're so concerned about what the people are going to say. What are the people going to think? They want to please the people so much that they're willing to compromise their religion. They're willing to leave things from their religion. They're willing to do that which is haram and displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just to make the people happy. But we see very clearly in this hadith that whoever strives to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is going to make it easy for him when it comes to the people. And whoever does that which is displeasing to Allah in order to please the people, that he's going to live in misery when it comes to his dealings with the people. It's going to be difficult. Life is going to be difficult. But the one who strives for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and his main objective is to, is to please Allah. He's going he's gonna to live a life of tranquility. A life of peace of mind, of peace of heart. Subhanallah, people put themselves through so much difficulties. Through a living hell in order to please the people. But as Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah, rahimahullah ta'ala used to say, Ridha nas that pleasing the people is a goal or an objective that can't be reached. It's impossible to please everyone in this life. Even the prophets had enemies. Not everyone was pleased with them. And they're the best of the creation. So what about you? You're going to make everyone happy. Everyone's going to like you. For a Muslim, our main concern and our main objective is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with us. Not what the people say, not what the people think. As long as Allah is pleased with us, alhamdulillah. And that's why before we do any action, we need to stop 
and reflect and ask ourselves, is this action pleasing or is it displeasing to Allah? When I stand in front of Allah, Yawm Al-Qiyamah, to be held accountable, this action that I'm doing, is it going to please Him? Or is it going to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala angry with me? And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is angry with you, He's not pleased with you, then you will be from the losers, not just in the hereafter, but in the losers in this life as well. If we wanted to ask ourselves, what are some of the signs that show us if Allah is pleased with us or not? And what are some of the things that I can do in order to obtain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That Allah will be pleased with me. That Allah will approve of what the, that, that what I do. When it comes to some of the signs, I'll mention two signs. First of all, and perhaps the biggest sign is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the ability, the tawfiq, to do that which is pleasing to him. To be obedient to Allah and to his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When you find yourself striving to please Allah, striving to follow the command of Allah and the command of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and you, find, you feel good inside when you do it, your iman is increasing, your yaqeen, your certainty is increasing when you strive to please Allah and to, and to follow the command of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and you find yourself inside when it comes to displeasing Allah and doing that which is haram, you find it very difficult to handle. If this is you, alhamdulillah, this is the main sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you. If He's blessed you to be on this path, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you and He's pleased with you inshallah ta'ala. In the hadith al-Qudsi, which was narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said very clearly, وَمَا تَقَرَّبْ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِنْ مَفْتَرَضْتُهُ عَلَيْهِ That my servant does not become closer to me with any action more than that which I have made compulsory upon him. Therefore we hear this, we say, if I want Allah to be pleased with me, the main thing I need to focus on is doing that which Allah made fard compulsory upon me. And that which Allah made fard compulsory upon us from the actions that we have to do and from the things that are haram that we have to stay away from. Whether it comes in the Quran or in the sunnah of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِ يَتَقَرُّبْ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِ حَتَّى أُحِبَّ Allahu Akbar. Allah said, and my servant will continue to come closer to me by doing the nawafil, the voluntary acts of worship. Until what? Allah said, until I love him. Ya Allah. Until Allah loves us, doing that which is fard upon us, and then striving to do the voluntary nawafil actions. Allah will love us. And if Allah loves us, what happens? Allah said, وَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ And if I love him, what's going to happen? كُنْتُ سَمْعُهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِي I become the hearing that he hears with. Everything you hear, everything you listen, it comes for, it's for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَبَصَرُهُ الَّذِي يُبْصِرُ بِي And the vision that he sees with. وَيَدُهُ الَّذِي يَبْطِشُ بِهَا And the hand that he strikes with. What you do with your hands is for Allah. وَرِجْلُهُ الَّذِي يَمْشِ بِهَا and the legs that he walks upon. When you walk, when you act, you do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you do all of this, this becomes who you are. The one who strives for the approval and the pleasure of Allah. What do you get in return as well? Allah says, وَإِنْ سَالَنِي وَلَإِنْ سَالَنِي لَعُطِيَنَّ If he asks me, then I will answer him. If you're the ones who strive for Allah, doing that which is far, doing that which is nawafil, you live for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your actions, you ask Allah, you have the promise here that Allah will answer you. When istaadni la'u'idhanna, Allah said, if he seeks my protection, then I will protect him. Allah will be there for you. He will answer your prayers. He will protect you. He will assist you. He will help you. This is the, main, the major sign 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you. And from the signs that came in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is being tested. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Idhamul jaza ma'idhamul bala that the greatness of the reward comes from the greatness of the test. And he said, وَإِذَا أَحَبَّ اللَّهُ قَوْمًا إِبْتَلَاهُمْ And if Allah loves a group of people, that he tests them. فَمَنْ رَضِيَ فَلَهُ رِضَى وَمَنْ سَخِطَ فَلَهُ سُخْطِ And whoever is pleased, meaning pleased with this test, then he will have the pleasure, he will obtain the pleasure of Allah. And whoever is displeased with this test, that Allah has tested it with him, then he will receive the wrath or the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah safeguard us. These are some of the signs that show us that Allah is pleased with us. And if we don't have these signs, we don't see this, then this is a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased with us. And each one of us needs to go back and to look into himself, into his actions. Each one of us knows himself. What are some of the things that I can do in order to obtain the pleasure of Allah? There's three main areas I want to talk about when it comes to obtaining the pleasure of Allah. First of all, we need to look at the actions that are pleasing to Allah and we need to strive to do them. And we need to look at the actions which are displeasing to Allah and we need to refrain and to stay away from them. This is the main thing when it comes to our actions. And the hadith which was narrated in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la yarda lakum thalathan that Allah is pleased when you do three things an ta'buduhu wa la tushriku bihi shay'a wa an ta'tasimu bi habli llahi jami'an wa la tafarraqu that you worship Allah as one and don't join any partners with him and you hold firm to the rope of Allah the rope of Allah the religion of Allah hold firm to the Quran and to the sunnah and that you do not differ and deviate amongst yourselves. And if you look at these principles in this hadith, this is the true essence of Islam. It starts with Tawheed, sincerity in our worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then the Tiba, following the Quran and the Sunnah and holding firm to it, and not deviating amongst ourselves, not dividing into groups, but being as one Ummah. If we have these principles, we're going to be successful and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be pleased with us. And another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was mentioning from the best a'mal, the best actions, and he said, وَأَرْضَاهَا عِنْدَ مَلِيكِكُمْ And the most pleasurable to your master. He said, would you not like me to tell you what this action is? The Sahaba said, of course, Ya Rasulullah. He said, ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ the remembrance of Allah. If you want Allah to be pleased with you, constantly make your tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah. Constantly make the dhikr. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly and you, and you will obtain the pleasure of Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in another hadith about being grateful, being thankful to Allah. He said, Inna Allah la yarda lil abd. That Allah is pleased with the servant. Ya'kul al akla fa yahmiduhu alayha. Wa yashrab al shurba fa yahmiduhu alayha. That he eats or drinks something and he praises Allah. He thanks Allah for it. Allah will be pleased with him. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all, the, all of the gifts that he's given us, all the blessings that he's giving us. When we're thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will be pleased with us. It's very important that we realize when we follow the path to obtain the ridwan and the pleasure of Allah, that we're going to have difficulties in dealing with those who are around us. Whether they're from the Muslims or the non-Muslims, those who prefer to follow their desires, Instead of following that which is pleasing to Allah, Allah made it clear to us in Surah An Nisa. Wallahu yuridu ayyatuba alaykum, 
ويريد الذين يتبعون الشهوات أن تميلوا ميلا عظيما that Allah wants to repent upon you Allah wants you to make tawbah and He wants to accept your tawbah but the ones who follow the shahwat, the desires, they want you to go astray from the straight path. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the Qur'an, He commanded us to hold firm to our religion and to make i'rab, to turn away from those who don't follow their religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَاتَّبِعْ مَا أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ وَأَعْرَضْ عَنِ الْمُشْرِكِينَ And follow that which has been revealed to you from your Lord. There is no deity worthy of worship except for Him. And stay away from the mushrikeen, from the polytheists, from those who join partners with Allah. Follow that which has been revealed to you. لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ Follow that which has been revealed to you from your Lord. There's no deity except for Him. La ilaha illallah. It's as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in the middle of the verse after He commanded us to follow the wahi, the revelation, that the way to do that is through our tawheed, through la ilaha illallah. Hold firm to la ilaha illallah and that's how you're going to be strong and be able to follow the wahi. And the other verse, Fasda bima tu'mar wa'aradhan al-mushrikeen. And to openly proclaim that what you've been ordered to do. And stay away from the mushrikeen, from the polytheists. To openly proclaim that what you have been ordered. Meaning act upon your Islam. Be proud to be a Muslim. Show clearly that I'm following Allah's command. I'm following the command of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's why I do what I do. I openly proclaim it. I don't hide it. Like many Muslims do today, they're shy to implement their Islam. They're shy to say, no, I can't do this because I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, because I'm, I'm a Muslim. We face the problem whether we live in the West or even in the Muslim countries. A woman comes and wants to shake your hand. And the brother says, I'm too shy to implement Islam. And he shakes her hand and causes problems for the other ones. When if you show out respect and you say, I can't do it because I'm a Muslim. I can't do it because... The Prophet Sallallahu forbid me to do it and I'm proud to follow his sunnah and I mean no offense to you. A sister who can't go out of her house nowadays with a proper hijab. She can't go out without her makeup because she's so concerned about what the people are going to say. But I'm a Muslim and I'm going to wear my hijab as Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala commanded me to do. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded me to do. I'm not going to put on makeup because it's haram and I don't care what the people think. I'm not going to put on perfume when I go to the house because I'm a Muslim and I'm forbidden from doing that. This is the message of the Quran. This is the message of the Sunnah. Don't focus on what people say and what they think. Focus on following the command of Allah and following the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Be unique as a Muslim. Be proud. All throughout the Sunnah of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Be different from the Christians. Be different from the Jews. Be different from the Majus, the fire worshippers. All of this teaching us to be different, to be unique as a Muslim. We have our own identity. We don't follow the trends of the West or the trends of the East or the trends of that. We follow our customs or I follow the Sunnah. We follow the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the way of the Sahaba. We need to be proud of this. We live in a time where Islam is strange. But Alhamdulillah, for those who hold firm to it and those who are proud, to be from those who follow the last revelation and those who follow the best man to ever walk the face of this earth, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has given us glad tidings. He said alayhi salatu wa salam, بَدَ الْإِسْلَامُ غَرِيبًا وَسَيَعُودُ غَرِيبًا فَطُوبَى لِلْغُرَبَاء He said alayhi salatu wa salam, that Islam started as something strange and it's going to return as something strange so glad tidings to the strangers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all from the strangers, those who hold firm to that which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if it's displeasing to the people. Bismillah wa kafa wa salatu wa salam ala nabi al-Mustafa wa ba'd. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, if we really want to obtain the acceptance and the pleasure, the ridwan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we want Allah to be pleased with us. It's something that can't 
just be on our tongue or a hope that is in our heart. It has to be something that shows up in our actions. Not just something you hope in your heart, but it has to show up in your actions. When you look into the Quran, in Surah Ali Imran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was praising those who obeyed the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when they went out for the battle of Badr. They weren't prepared, but they went out following the command of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about them, وَاتَّبَعُوا رِضْوَانَ اللَّهِ And they followed the pleasure of Allah. This is their objective, is that Allah is pleased with them. When we obey to Allah, and we obey and we adhere to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our objective is that Allah is pleased with us. When Allah mentioned in Surah Al-Hashr, those who left their homelands, those who were expelled from their homelands and kicked out, what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about their intention? يَبْتَغُونَ فَضْلًا مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانًا That they want the bounty of Allah and the pleasure. They want Allah to be pleased with them. And what else? وَيَنْصُرُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولًا And they support Allah and His Messenger. What did Allah say about them? أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الصَّادِقُونَ That these are the صَادِقُونَ These are the truthful ones. Those who strive to obtain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to support Al-Islam. These are the truthful ones. And Surah Al-Baqarah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْرِ نَفْسُهُ بِتِغَوَى مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ And from the people, the ones who sells himself, he sells his own self, why? To obtain the pleasure of Allah. Therefore, if we're going to obtain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to strive. We need to strive with our actions. And we mentioned... And the things that we do to obtain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're going to talk about three fields, three areas. We only mention one of them. The other two is that we look into those who Allah is pleased with. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, radiallahu anhum, that Allah is pleased with them. Therefore, we have to look into their lives, look into their biographies, into their seerah, and see what their actions were. What did they do to obtain this high level of Allah being pleased with them so we can follow in their footsteps? And the third thing we need to focus on is the dua. Making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you look at the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to say alayhi salatu wa sallam, Allahumma inni as'aluka ridaka wal jannah. Oh Allah, I ask you your pleasure and the jannah. And we say, Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And he used to say, alayhi salatu was salam, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika. Allahumma inni a'udhu bi ridaq min sakhatik. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in your pleasure from your wrath. We seek pleasure. We seek Allah's assistance. We seek Allah's protection from, with his pleasure by doing that which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from Allah's wrath. And then any dua that you can think of. If you want Allah to be pleased with you, open your heart up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Beg upon Allah. Wallah ya khwan, even if it's in your own language. You say, I don't know, I, I don't understand Arabic. The dua, as I said, from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, learn, learn them in Arabic, memorize them, learn their meanings, and then after you say them, open up your heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Speak to Allah. Oh Allah, help me. Oh Allah, assist me. Oh Allah, I'm weak. I only find my strength through you, Ya Allah, help me to do that which is pleasing to you and help me stay away from doing that which is displeasing to you, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, ya Allah make me from those when I stand in front of you, Yawm Al-Qiyamah, that you're pleased with me. Open your heart up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, as a Muslim, what is the main thing that I want from this dunya, from this life that I live in? And what is the main thing I want from the akhirah, from the hereafter? The main thing I want to accomplish as a Muslim in this life, first and foremost, is that I do that which is pleasing to Allah. That I please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is my main objective. Secondly, I want to establish my religion in myself, first of all, and then establish it upon the earth. 
This is my objective as a Muslim. This is what I want to establish. And I add to that a third point, which is that I want to excel and be the best that I can be in all the aspects of this life, the religious and the worldly affairs. This is what it means to be a Muslim. And this is what I want to accomplish with the life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me with. What do I want to accomplish in the akhir, in the hereafter? As a Muslim in the hereafter, the most important thing, once again, is Ridwan Allah. Is that Allah is pleased with me. When I stand in front of Allah, that Allah is, a, is pleased with me and He accepts from me. And then that He forgives me for my sins. And then that He enters me into the Jannah. And if we want to accomplish all of these things, remember what Musa alayhi salam said in Surah Taha. وَعَجِلْتُ إِلَيْكَ رَبِّي لِتَرْضَى And I hasten to you. I race to you, ya my Rabb, O oh my Lord. I hasten to you, why? لِتَرْضَى So you will be pleased with me. If you want Allah to be pleased with you, you have to race to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to strive for it. And then remember, my dear brothers and sisters, as we battle in this dunya, we battle in this life, and you're going to face difficulties, you're going to face tests, it's not going to be easy. Remember what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah at tawbah verse 72, when Allah mentioned some of the pleasures that He will give to the people of the Jannah, and then Allah said at the end, وَرِدْوَانُ مِّنَ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ and pleasure, acceptance from Allah is even greater. Greater than all of that. All of the pleasures of the Jannah. And the pleasure, the acceptance from Allah is even greater. Allahu Akbar. If that's what the pleasures of the hereafter, what about the pleasures of the dunya? Always remember that the Ridwan, the pleasure from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always be greater. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be from those who strive to obtain his pleasure and be from those who run away from that which is disobedience and displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.